Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 438. Um, the topic today is, does your self-esteem get in the way of love? And what to do about that? And before I jump into that, let me choose myself. By the way, I'm back in, you know, weekday clothes. <laughs> Dressed up as it were. It's casual this weekend, so just getting back in track. So, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And every day I do these talks called, no, rewind. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I have these things I say, and I get them out of water, it throws me off. So, <laughs> let me say it again. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And now, every day, <laughs> I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And as of today, and now episode 438. So if you haven't seen me before, you've got a lot to catch up on. Um, I normally do this at 5 p.m. Pacific time, which this week I'm planning to do, except one day I'm have to do it early. I'll, I'll post on Facebook earlier when I'm shifting it to, if I need to. So today's topic, again, is does your self-esteem get in the way of love? And reality is, this is a double-edged sword and a trap. Yes, a double-edged sword and a trap these two together. If you saw my broadcast last week, I spoke on several days about self-love and this is going to speak about that too from another perspective because it may hopefully give you the clue that loving yourself is really, really a top priority. An absolutely, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Vital part of your self-support work to attract what you want in a relationship. And I would say, frankly, self-esteem, which is undergirded, as it were, interesting visual, undergirded by self-love, will impact every area of your life, not just relationship. In fact, it will impact your business life, and other areas too, because, and I actually wrote, it, wrote this in the guide, that, which I'll tell you about in a minute, that self-love really is, well, first of all, let me put, put one thing back on the table. What self-love is not, is ego polishing. <laughs> Let me be clear about that. Some people think that when, you, when you're doing self-love work, you're getting too egotistical and stuck up and aloof. It's like, no. Self-love is, is actually self-supporting. So self-esteem, self-support, self-approval, self-appreciation, self-confidence are all wired up with self-love. So it's a very useful, and I would say vital, as I mentioned, tool in your own development. Now, I mentioned that it impacts other areas of your life. When your self-esteem is strong, and I don't mean, again, I'm going to be qualified this time, I'm going to keep saying this clear and clear and clear. Self-esteem and self-support and self-love are about your heart's support structure. Egotistical self-aggrandizement, that's the right word, and ego polishing, as I mentioned, is up here. <clears throat> so you may put up with things without realizing it because your self-esteem is low. And so I'm talking about relationships being impacted because your self-esteem is not where it should be, could be, you may settle for things less than you deserve. Relationship, work, social conditions, environment, all these things can be impacted by not having the, your own self-esteem raised up. The idea of settling for less than you deserve is exactly what that's about. To really have what you want, to really hold out for what you want, that's the other part by the way, to hold out for what you want, what you want rather than jumping into what comes up the first thing that shows up, it is vital. I get that work, I'm not getting that work, you tell me a lot too. That you look at yourself in the mirror with honesty. Everything you're attracting in your life is to a large point a reflection of how you treat yourself. And some of you are going, oh crap. Well, this is the truth. And I'm, I'm, I'm listening to myself say this too because it's one of my own um, upper limits I'm working on and, and bursting through because I'm realizing in certain areas of my life I've settle for less than I deserve, or settle for less than I know I really want, because I didn't think I deserved better than that. And I'm sure that you can relate on some level as well. The reality of this as well is that you could not, you would not relate to this if you have a totally boosted ego that doesn't give a flying F about anybody else. But if you're somebody like that, you probably want, I'm not watching my videos anyway, in which case, good luck to you. But what I am saying to those of you, for, for those who watch my videos, I know your heart. I know that you have compassion and caring for yourself and other people. I know that you want to make a difference. 
and also know that sometimes you hold back. You play less than you deserve and you settle for less than you deserve. So your self-esteem is underpowered. And when your self-esteem is underpowered, getting what you want, having what you want is out of reach. And sometimes you feel disappointment. Okay. Sometimes I felt disappointment, let me be clear about that, where I didn't get what I thought I wanted. And it's tied into, wired into largely, this, um, it's not tuning, but this, this understanding of self-esteem. And it sounds so simplistic, and it can be simplistic in a way, but the realization is for most people on the planet, most people on the planet, their self-esteem has taken a battering over the years. And yours probably has too, mine certainly has. Where things have happened, situations, experiences that energetically or emotionally took our legs out from underneath us. And by that happening, we, because I'm including both of us in this, have had a view of life shifted from what we thought we wanted down to where we think we can have, have to put up with. And the challenge with that is, is that yes, those things happen where you get knocked down a couple of pegs, but you don't have to stay there. And that's the mistaken approach that many of us, yes, me included, have made over the years. We've been caught up in this paradigm where we think that because we didn't get what we wanted the first time, the second time it shows up, we don't even bother trying because we don't think we're going to have it. We don't feel we deserve it. We don't feel, um, well, the big word, worthy of it. Self-esteem is very much tied to our experience of worthiness and is a quick little primer, primer, we call that word, on worthiness. You are worthy. Because you exist. Probably you're going to go, what do you mean by that? We, we in this world, especially in, well, let me put it this way. <laughs> especially we, as, we, have a, we in the conscious awareness spiritual community tend to be the ones that seem to have more upset and issue with worthiness than, Jen, than Joe Public does. Maybe because we're doing more self-examination or maybe because we, we see the flaws that we're working through. Because Joe Public generally is, is, is blind to this stuff and doesn't feel it. But worthiness is actually something that is who we are. We're being worthy is not based upon circumstance, based upon experience, based upon skill, based upon intelligence, based upon beauty. Worthiness is who you are. It's a default status that everybody on the planet has. And I'm speaking spiritually in this sense because knowing that we are, I'm going to pull this one out on you, sourced in spirit, that we are human beings, have, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, let me say it the right way around. Our worthiness is, is done, deal. By default, we are worthy. So everything else is gravy, so to speak. But everything else we do, we tend to be battered around and influenced by what happens around us, and we think that we don't deserve. We think that we're not worthy. Again, self-esteem and worthiness are tied together. So even though we are innately worthy by design, by creation, by being present on the planet, our self-esteem can fluctuate independent of that because we don't know better. Well, we might know better, we don't do better, and that's the trap. So as I tied in before, self-esteem and self-love go together. Because when you are fully embracing who you are, loving your beingness, and to a degree loving what you do, because you can do that as well, then your self-esteem naturally will rise up to where it's meant to be. Not over the top, where it's meant to be. The thing about people is get scared of is they think they're getting too, they fall in love with themselves too much. And I don't mean the egotistical way. And I don't mean narcissism. That's, this, is a, this is another point, by the way. I'll get to that in a second. The self-esteem piece just raises up to where it's meant to be. It's almost like having a, um, like liquid finds its own equilibrium. Self-esteem does the same thing. It doesn't overdo itself. If you force it up, again, ego-driven, you can push it over the top. And that's where you end up being a trap. The reality is your focus has, has to be, if you want to raise your self-esteem, on honoring who you are and respecting who you are. Because nobody will respect you more than you respect yourself. So the more you respect yourself and appreciate who you are and love yourself, the more other people can do the same thing as well. It's one of the secrets of the universe, by the way. Just dropping them in your lap so you can deal with them. Your, let me say that another way, your level of self-support, self-love and self-appreciation raises the bar on everybody around you. One, because they will see you differently and respond to you differently. And secondly, you will tend to respect them differently as well. So it's a two-way two street, which is good. And I want to put the narcissism piece on the table because some people look at narcissism, sorry, some people look at this overly developed self-esteem or being self-loving or these things as being some 
um, downward spiral into narcissistic behavior. Not true. Absolutely not true. Let me make clear about that. Narcissism in the clinical sense is somebody who is emotionally and um, spiritually deficient. Somebody who is a narcissist in the clinical sense, again, I'm using clinical terms for a second, is a person who is so unable to fill up their own tanks, they steal from other people. A narcissism, narcissist is a thief, energetically speaking. That's not a spirit, that's not a, a clinical term, but it is an interpretation. So if you're with, you're with somebody in a relationship, and I, I've got clients who've been through this, so I hope you're not, who basically was with somebody who was the perfect partner at the beginning, just courted them, loved them, loved them up, made they were perfect, but once the relationship started, they, that the, the other person was su basically sucking their energy dry, was living off of them energetically. As I talked about before, they're like an emotional vampire. They're living off the emotions that you express. That is narcissism, the true definition. So to come back to what I was talking about, if you feel that you're worried if you get too much self-loving, you might be narcissistic, not possible, not possible. Narcissism is not that thing. Yes, the selfie-itis that's going around with people, so it's like me, 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 me stuff, that's ego. That's ego-driven bullshit, to be blunt. The real, um, the reality of life, the true expression of who you are comes from your self-esteem, your self-love, your self-support. So putting energy into self-love, practices, skills, whatever that is, that starts with who you are, honoring who you are, respecting yourself, loving yourself, is a healthy approach to life, a healthy approach to relationships, a healthy approach to living in the world. And again, it's not, it's not the ego, this is the heart. And again, that's why I do this work to say, it's heart-centered. So the focus in your life to fill up your own tanks first means one, you can give to other people. And two, which is the other part, is you're not dependent upon other people. And being, um, being independent, being not being dependent on other people, is a massively powerful way to be in a healthy relationship with yourself and other people. This simple tool, self with self-love, will open doors to higher levels of relationship than you ever dreamed possible. When you can be in a relationship where there's nothing you need from the other person and nothing they need from you, because you both love yourselves enough to add to each other's relationship. That's a healthy relationship. The paradigm that I've talked about many times about how people think relationships are 50-50 is largely based on the fact we don't believe in ourselves enough. We don't feel whole. So we go to find somebody else to fill that gap we think we have, which is not fillable by somebody else. This is the joke of the whole thing. Truly, the ability for you to love yourself fills up that um, imaginary gap inside yourself because the reality is you are worthy, as I mentioned. You are deserving of love. You are absolutely fully expressing. So relationships, again, are 50-50. They're 100, 100. Two whole individual people coming together, adding to each other, not replacing anything that's missing, because there's nothing missing. So, quick, quick piece on the end of this, because I think you've got the point of this, not giving you enough deep thoughts to think about. Self-love is something you can work on. And for a lot of people, they think, well, I, I'll take care of myself better. I'll do go to the gym more. It's like, no. Well, yes, and. <laughs> Self-love starts with an inner process. Self-love is a reconnect to inside. Yes, when you love yourself, you go out and do things that support that health. Go to the gym, go running, ride a bike, eat well, meditate, do yoga, all these different things you can do to take care of yourself. Those are more expressions of self-love versus the fuel of self-love. Truly. Self-love starts within. And yes, I have something to offer. So I'm letting you know that now. <laughs> so you can tune out ready or not, but I hope you stay on because this is going to be useful information. So the first thing is, I've talked about on broadcast before, months of this, many, many months of this, about how self-love can be generated, can be built up by using just a mirror to reflect in, to see yourself in the mirror and to offer yourself love. As has been, as I mentioned before last week, several clients have asked me to put something together in writing for them so they can use it as a reference because they don't always watch my whole broadcast to remember to do it, and this is the daily practice. So what I did was, uh, what I've done and created and produced and now offering is a self-love mirror meditation practice. It's actually, it's actually a workbook or actually a guest guidebook that will, for those people who want it, you can have it. 
However, that is a useful resource. In fact, it's gotten quite a lot of information in it. It'll help you with a lot of things. But the reality is the key in it, and I wrote how to do this the other way, was written was great, but, or and, <laughs> watching myself read language as I go, is that these meditations are even more powerful if you don't have to read them, but if you can listen to them. And so when you're doing a meditation, when you're looking in the mirror and seeing yourself, if you have a voice guiding you to breathe and to take in and to connect and send love and receive love and feel it inside and, and the ex exploration of self-love, it'd be much more effective. So I did that for you. What I've actually created is a workbook which has two, not one, but two meditations, an AM and a PM, because they're different. And there's a reason for that. You'll have to want to get, the, get the workbook and the audios to understand why. But there's an AM and PM that actually set up your day and complete your day, as well as having this self-reflection process. Rather than me trying to explain the whole thing, just go to my website, go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love, or one word, and check it out for yourself. You can read about it, and if you want to get it, just go and get it right there. I can guarantee you, if you don't use this, it won't help you. <laughs> Let me be clear about that. And the truth is that when you do love yourself, your life will transform. So self-esteem fueled by self-love. Loving yourself fully makes you more worthy and deserving of who you really are because you already are worthy and it reminds you of the truth. It raises the standards for everything around you and it starts inside. So check out my invitation my offer. If you want to get more help than beyond that, definitely reach out to me. Either send a message over social media or go to my website and sign up for the discovery session, which is the Let's Chat on the left-hand side of the menu, and we can talk. My service, my commitment, my mission is to help support people be more loving, to help my audience be more successful in love and life, and it's my gift to serve you. So with that, quick reminders, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, 5 p.m. Pacific time is my broadcast time every day. Although one day this week I might be changing that because a friend of mine is watching those about that. Um, but I'll announce on the same day. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you watch my archives, which is 436 of those already. <laughs> 37. It's up until this one, including this one. You can watch them on my business, on my, um, well, I have them on Facebook, YouTube, and on podcasts, and I explain where they are. On Facebook, I save onto my business page because my personal page gets very busy, so find them on my business page which is barryselby.author. You can also watch them on YouTube if you're a YouTube fanatic. You can definitely um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and click on Messages for the Masculine to watch my broadcast there. And thirdly, I now have been loading them up onto my iTunes podcast. If you go to Messages for the Masculine on iTunes, you'll find them there. That is that's enough to keep you busy. Again, barryselby.com forward slash self-love is where you can find out about the self-love program. So, excuse me. Self love practice is not a program, it's a download. You use it and do it. With the audios included, it will change your life. It will certainly change your experience of yourself. So I invite you to check it out. With that, I thank you for watching. Um, yeah, that's it. Tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, I'll be back and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care.